out of these two Final Fantasy Final Bosses, which was the better boss? Sephiroth or Kefka? Now I'm giving those two choices because both villains ultimately are the main villains from beginning to end. They're the ones with the most straightforward goal, or well, as straightforward as you can get, with Kafka being a nihilistic it clown or joker clown. Just wants to see the world burn. And yeah, that's Kafka. Sephiroth being the genocidal maniac who thinks he's of an alien race and wants to essentially become God as a reclamation and to destroy mankind. So both their goals are pretty simple. And I didn't choose any other villain, not only because of that, but because think about Final Fantasy IV. That's a good Final Fantasy, yet you think Golbez would ultimately be the bad guy, the main villain, the main squeeze, yet ends up being Zemus or Zeromus because of some nasty ass soap opera cold gay ass plot twist that nobody really liked I know I didn't, it was a disappointment played out okay, but whatever and you also had x from Final Fantasy V and his motives I really don't know them it's a relatively simple game though, and he does remain the main bad guy once you see him all the way through it. And the guy is powerful, he's comical, he's intimidating, and he is dark. Yet some of these other bad guys, like whoever was a bad guy in Final Fantasy X, Yu Yevin, Sin, Jet. A mess. How you think it would be Kuja, the sympathetic bad guy in Final Fantasy IX, the guy who's just in, had suffered through accident of birth, but no, it's really Necron who's a bad guy. And then the Ultimisia drama with the whole time compression issue, Final Fantasy VIII was a mess. So, at the end of the day, it's just going to be these two that have to pick. Sephiroth or Kefka. A lot of people are probably going to say that Kefka is better because he was the first and only villain to actually successfully destroy the planet or the world. He succeeds in fucking it up. At the same time, the way he did it, I don't think it was that impressive. Because he basically sneaked it through. He went under the fake out bad guy's nose and did it. You know, that nasty king or emperor. And furthermore, destroying the planet and Final Fantasy VI isn't nearly as difficult as destroying a planet in Final Fantasy VII. To destroy mankind in a planet in Final Fantasy VII, that planet is less of a planet and more of a vagina or something because that thing is self-healing. And to top it all off, that planet like life stream the energy that functions to protect the planet also functions as an afterlife so there's a lot of um, complexity and difficulty in that it becomes too much of a hassle 
So for Sephiroth to destroy mankind and the planet, it would take a lot more effort to for him to recreate his own personal nightmare world. It really would. And to be fair to Kefka, Sephiroth also kind of did some sneaky stuff. He basically used Genova for the dirty work most of the game. I mean, all these Genova cells would transmutate into Sephiroth's soul, yet the actual Sephiroth was basically sleeping in a solidified pool of Mako recovering from a wound from a level 1 Cloud Strife. Which how Cloud fucked Sephiroth in the first place was actually kind of badass. He got impelled straight through, managed to... While the sword was still inside him, you know, get to the ground, get grounded. Because while he got stabbed, he also got lifted. I Sephiroth was kind of physically impossible, but you managed to get back to the ground, lift Sephiroth up, and throw him off the bridge into the pool of Mako, which was an awesome spot. And I'd like to see that work in real life, but I know it would be way too ridiculous and physically impossible. Just like Cloud's hairstyle or his sword to body ratio how he uses it to, what he does with it, surviving a supernova, a lot of impractical things. <laughs> like how Sephiroth is a supernova, yet he's trying to destroy the world with a meteor. Go figure. And with all those nova clones, based off little limbs she has, can he just make himself out of each individual cell, send like 20 billion Sephiroth clones down to like wreck shop against everyone on the planet, that would be kind of cool, imagine 20,000 Sephiroths descending from the sky and like downward plunging people, it'd be awesome, that's good money right there. But if you ask me, it all depends on the aesthetic too. With Sephiroth, we identify him as a man in the black cape, who ultimately becomes the one winged angel and gets that theme song that isn't even really his theme song. The thing that sounded like Jaws theme was his theme song. I mean, now, one only Angel kind of sounded like the Jaws theme. I take that back. The thing that sounded like Undertaker's theme. Dun, dun, do, 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 I'm gonna get to go to Sephiroth just because I remember scenes with him tearing open Genova's that little mechanical thing that was blocking her actually seeing his fake alien mom I think he actually thinks is his mom and his mom's really Lucrezia uh, I have to like see scenes like the one where Sephiroth, like, just stab the guy, Cloud sees him, Lily Zack, and he just walks through a fire without even looking at you. Like a thick ass ember, he walks through it. Usually, badasses walk away from the explosion. This guy walks through a giant ember of flame, like it's nothing, a shroud of veil of fire. A yeah, veil of fire, that's probably how you call it. Veil of fire? Doesn't matter. That's what it is. Three
three-part Sephiroth boss that was easy as hell. But each had awesome music. Yeah, there's so much cool stuff with Sephiroth. I mean, he kills everyone's waifu. Sephiroth kills the game's official waifu. Tifa ain't the waifu. Tifa is the chick that friend zones you. Aerith was everyone's waifu in that game, and he made these beta males cry. That's why I love Sephiroth. He didn't give a fuck when he killed her. <laughs> he even mocked them and did a downward thrust on everyone in the beginning of this too. Oh, that's so awesome. I love Sephiroth. Kefka's like crazy too. He doesn't give a fuck, but he's not a bitter genocidal maniac. He's sort of... He's just a whiny, nihilistic joker. And he does his fair share of evil, especially when he destroys the world. And all those times he basically brainwashed Terra. Kind of scarred her for life. Guy's awesome, but... You have to ask yourself, did Kefka make every beta male in the world cry? He may be the more interesting villain to some people, but in terms of a JRPG, Sephiroth is the best simply because he invokes a lot of fear in the beginning when you find out about him. He basically, like, he was part of the only two times there was legit blood in the game when he kills everyone in Shinra Manor. A flashback sequence. Murdering everyone in that town. The mind games. And making every beta male on the planet cry because he killed a waifu. He killed the main waifu everyone had. The queen waifu. The queen waifu is dead. Cloud was only left with the queen friend zone. <sighs> That's why Sephiroth is king, man. Sephiroth is king. And I had to get my ass beat so many times anytime I played the Kingdom Hearts game because that mofo. He doesn't give a fuck, man. Sephiroth's a G. Sooner or later, everyone realizes this. But, yeah. Also, nihilistic characters are overrated. And if you think about it, nothing's more Fedora than Kefka now. Dark Knight got big many years later. A decade and two years. Four years, actually. So now everyone's trying to act like a nihilistic, anarchist, misanthropy, clown, a flamboyant as shit, an emo, too. No one's trying to act like Sephiroth anymore. No one's trying to be a legit emo guy with an Oedipus complex. Sounding like a whiny Jew with this whole, I'm better than everyone, but I'm also an oppressed race thing. Hell, Sephiroth even sounds kind of like a Jewy name. But it don't matter because he made you guys cry. If you're a beta male, Sephiroth made you cry. Admit it. Admit it. Respect the king.